Hello viewers, welcome to this video. In the previous two videos, we saw how to install and run Jenkins on an AWS EC2 instance. And in this video, let's see how to launch uh, an EC2 instance as a Jenkins slave or Jenkins build servers, all right? So we will be using Amazon's uh, EC2 plugin for Jenkins. We will install that AWS EC2 Jenkins plugin. And then we will see how to launch so whenever you trigger a build and it will dynamically launch an EC2 slave instance and then it will run the job and then it will terminate that instance for you. So it's kind of dynamically um, launching the instances and terminating when it's uh, when it's not doing anything. All right, so I've logged into my AWS management console and if I go to the EC2 service and you can see there's one running instance which is the Jenkins master from my previous videos and it's all running fine and if I copy the public IP address and go to colon 8080 and that's our Jenkins server all right so in order to uh, use the AWS EC2 plugin but before that we need to give this Jenkins EC2 instance the ability to create additional EC2 instances so you could either use your AWS secret key and access key ID, but it's not always a good practice to give your user credentials uh, to the Jenkins machine. So the right way would be to create a role, IAM role, and assign that role to this instance, and just give the permission that it actually needs, that's it, not more, not less. Okay, let's do that first. If I go to a, um, AWS Management Console and search for IAM, Go to the IAM services and click on roles. Let's create a new role. Create a role, choose the service that will use this role. So I'm gonna say EC2, next permissions. And in here, search for EC2 full access, Amazon EC2 full access basically. So this uh, role, um, wherever you attach this role to whichever instance you attach this role, that instance will have full EC2 access, which means it can create EC2 instances, it can stop, delete, and modify EC2 instances. Basically, full EC2 access. Next tags, if you want, you can add tag, review, give it a name, let's call it Jenkins EC2 role, create role, Okay, so role created and now if I go back to my EC2 dashboard and let's attach this role to the Jenkins server. Running instance, so that's our Jenkins instance. Uh, it's already selected. So go to actions, instance settings, attach or replace IAM role. So here select the role that we just created which is Jenkins EC2 role and click apply. Yep, I am role operation succeeded close. Okay, so now this um, Jenkins EC2 instance should be able to create additional EC2 instance, manage the EC2 instances without any problem. And now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create security groups for the Jenkins slave agents, for the Jenkins uh, slave EC2 instances. So as you can remember from my previous video, so that's the um, the security group we created for Jenkins master and if you look at the inbound rules so we have the custom TCP rule port 8080 um, and we also got port 22 opened so at the moment these two are opened just to my IP address and that's for testing purpose if you want you can expose that to uh, to the entire world create a new security group so now we are creating a security group for Jenkins slaves let's call it sg underscore Jenkins underscore slaves sg underscore Jenkins underscore slaves okay add rule so what are we trying to add here we need to add an SSH rule and the source is going to be the security group that we created for the Jenkins master so if you just start typing sg <coughs> excuse me if you just start typing SG, it will list you the security group that we created for Jenkins master, which is this one, select that. So this means any instance attached to this security group uh, can um, is allowed on port 22 on all the Jenkins uh, slave agents, okay? So create that security group. 
and now I think we are almost done okay so now let's go to the Jenkins dashboard and uh, let's start installing the EC2 plugin so go to manage Jenkins manage plugins available and search for AW Amazon EC2 or just EC2 it should come up and that's the one Amazon EC2 plugin install without restart okay so now it's uh, the plugin is getting installed alright so the plugin is installed so now if I go back to Jenkins or actually to manage Jenkins and then to configure system so now we should be able to see a new set of configuration if you scroll all the way to the bottom you will see add a new cloud select that and choose Amazon EC2 and give it a name let's call it AWS cloud and here's what I was talking about Amazon EC2 credentials so do you want to give this Jenkins instance your EC2 credentials like your access key ID your secret access key then it will have all the privileges that your user account has so if you want you can do that you can go ahead and add your Jenkins uh, AWS credentials username with password select AWS credentials and just type in some name AWS credentials just, just for an ID put some description and copy your access key ID and secret access key and then your Jenkins instance will have all the access that your user account has but I didn't I don't want to do that instead because we have attached the role to the instance to the Jenkins instance we can select this option use EC2 instance profile to obtain the credentials so that's all it's needed right so now region you need to make sure to select the appropriate region um, where you have your AMIs and so on so mine is in the London region which is EU West 2 EC2 key pairs private key so th this is how the Jenkins master is going to connect to the Jenkins agent right so you need to have the key pair so when you created when you launched the Jenkins master you might have created a uh, SSH key pair or you might have already used uh, key pair that you've already generated right so you need to copy the private key of that key pair into this box so that the, this Jenkins instance can use this private key to log into the Jenkins slave agents and then start the uh, Jenkins agent on that so basically the Jenkins master will connect to that EC2 instance through port uh, 22 and then it will start the Jenkins slave agent on that so for that it needs a key pair and I'm going to add my private key pair alright so I pasted my private key pair so make sure to paste your private key and then click test connection yep connection is successful now we can go ahead and add the AMIs so if I click on add and give it a description okay AMI description let's call it AWS Jenkins slave AMI ID for this I'm going to use the same AMI uh, that I used for my Jenkins master so if I go to instances and the AMI ID is this one I'm going to copy the AMI ID so this one is Amazon 2 AMI and that's the only AMI that I've tested it should work equally on all the AMIs that you choose but I'm choosing the same AMI that I um, that I've used for my Jenkins master check AMI yep Amazon AMI that's running fine and make sure to use the AMI in the same region that you specified here otherwise AMIs are region specific right okay so instance type is t2 micro where is it yep instance type t2 micro availability zone don't worry about that security group names yeah that's important sg underscore jenkins underscore slave so that's the security group that we created for uh, the slave remote fs root so that's the um, the jenkins root directory slash home ec2 dash user because the ami that i'm using the default user is ec2 dash user 
So I'm going to use the home directory of EC2 user as the Jenkins root directory. The remote user is EC2-user. You don't need any of these labels. Um, AWS, EC2, or whatever you want to call it. It's just to differentiate the, uh, uh, the slaves. Usage, use this node as much as possible. No, nope. only build jobs with label expressions matching this node. So only if I specify uh, this label in a job, then this node, this EC2 instance will get instantiated. Idle termination time. So let's change that to 10 minutes. So if there is no job running on this EC2 slave instance, and if it's been idle for like 10 minutes, the uh, the EC2 instance will be shut down, will be terminated. Init script, user data. User data is something uh, that you put if you want to run something uh, when the machine is being launched. So that's, uh, this is the place where you put all those scripts. Number of executors, it's up to, it's your preference. JVM options, stop disconnect idle timeout. If you want, you can add tags. Minimum number of instances, instance cap. So how many, how much instance you can launch using this AMI. So you've got the help option for all the, uh, all the options here. So you can look at that one. Delete root device on instance termination. Launch timeout in seconds. Associate public IP. Connection strategy is private IP, but I've tested this. We shouldn't be needing a public IP for Jenkins slave instances because they don't need public access. Um, we won't be connecting to the Jenkins slave agent. Only Jenkins master will be connecting to the Jenkins slave agents. So there is no reason we need an uh, we need a public IP associated with the with those instances. But I've tested this without this option checked. Uh, it didn't actually work. So I had to select this option associate public IP yes um, I think that's all if you want you can go through uh, various options that you can set but that's the bare minimum that you want click save and now let's create a new job and see if it's uh, starting a new AC2 instance um, create new jobs let's call this job a demo job a freestyle project click OK and then the restrict by this project can be run so label expression so i want to run this job on nodes that are labeled aws because we've labeled our ami um, as aws and build step execute shell i'm just going to run a simple command host name apply and save Cool, so now we should be able to um, start this job. Okay, if I trigger this job now, this should automatically create a new EC2 instance, run this job, and then after about 10 minutes of idle time, that EC2 instance should get deleted. All right, and um, let me refresh this. There you go, so that's the um, EC2 slave instance that's getting launched right now. So this one is the same AMI that I used for this one, which is Amazon 2 AMI, Amazon Linux 2 AMI, which doesn't come with Java. But if you want to run a Java Jenkins slave agent on a machine, it needs to have Java installed. But when you launch uh, the instance for the first time, the Jenkins master will connect to this agent through SSH. And then if it can't find Java, it will install the Java automatically for you. Um, yep, you can see here that's the instance and we can look at the log and see what's going on Let me move my Okay, so you can look at the log of this machine Yep, log complete. This is a Unix agent. Yep, as you can see here it has completed installing Java and it's now about to run our job our job is nothing but just a simple host name command. And if I scroll up now, you can see, um, yep, yeah, Java command not found, and it will install Java automatically for us, and then it will run the job. Okay, so if I go to Jenkins, and you can see the 
build completed successfully and the node is now idle the ec2 instance is idle so it will get terminated in about 10 minutes and here if i look at the console output job where is the console output come on console output yep so that's the host name the job ran successfully basically that's it so let me pause the video here and then after about 10 minutes i'm gonna check whether this instance gets terminated automatically or not all right so here um yep two instances in a short while this instance will get terminated i'll pause the video and come back when it's uh, terminated all right so as you can see here the jenkins ec2 slave instance is being uh, terminated and if I go to the Jenkins dashboard, that uh, EC2 node is no longer here. It's been like 12 minutes since the last successful build. So it's been idle for more than 10 minutes and it is now being terminated. Cool, so that's all I wanted to show you in this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Please share and subscribe. I will see you all in my next video. Bye-bye.